Ladies and gentlemen of the Gaming Citycom video, I have some really interesting news concerning DirectX 12. So, I'm sure many of you are aware of the performance improvements of DirectX 12, and we've covered them ad nauseum on the channel, including, of course, the fact that it's going to be better at uh, multi-core or multi-thread rendering. It's going to have rather large performance uh, improvements. A lot of these have been touted by Brad Wardell. However, there has been a source that have been speaking to Tom's Hardware. I've done more, by the way, and this is an article which is linked in the video description. But as I said, there was a source that was discussing this with Tom's Hardware. Now, he said that it's an unspoken API. So technically speaking, it could be something else, but let's face it, it's most likely DX12. Anyway, getting on to the pertinent part of this. The real crux of the matter is that DX12 is most likely going to allow you to run a GeForce and a Radeon GPU simultaneously in your PC. In other words, both cards will be able to function in a multi-graphics card scenario akin to, let's just say, Crossfire, which is very impressive indeed. So let's talk about this a little bit. So DX12 will support explicit asynchronous multi-GPU capabilities. Now we don't know all of this yet and hopefully more information will be revealed when we get GDC 2015. Obviously, he's whoever the source is, either he or she, I'll just say he for the sake of this, but the source has broken obviously some NDAs by revealing this information. So at the end of the day, they can't reveal everything. But DX12 will allow developers to actually split up the re GPU's resources however they desire. The API will gather all the graphics resources and store them into what it considers to be a, con a, con a single container. So, to understand what this means, if you were to look at current multi-GPU rigs, and this goes whether you're using NVIDIA or AMD, let's assume you have two graphics cards that are four gigabytes each. Um, so let's just say for the sake of argument the R9-290X and you're using DX11. What happens is you don't have 8 gigs of RAM. Technically you do have 8 gigs of physical memory but the reality is the GPUs, the, the graphical data is exactly mirrored between the two cards. In other words there is no physical difference. So for all intents and purposes you're only fitting 4 gigabytes of data there because the, the two are exactly the same. Um, now, the frame, the GPU renders, um, so GPU A will be rendering frame 1, while GPU B will be rendering, same f say, frame 2. In other words, it's alternate rendering. Now, this is not the best way of doing things because it does incur some latency, and we'll discuss that just in a second. But DX12 handles things a lot differently indeed. It will do split frame rendering for its particular technique and this will actually allow the developers to split the data however they wish. They can do so either manually or aut automatically between the two cards. So for example, uh, card A can have a series of textures and geometry while card B can have another series of texture and geometry and this allows the GPUs to split up the rendering work workload into portions and each portion represents an installed GPU. Now there's going to be potentially some crossover in data rather obviously but even so it's going to be a hell of a lot better than what we currently have and in effect the GPU is almost considered a single entity rather than two separate cards so resources are a better split and tasks are better aside across the two systems this will reduce latency as I stated at the beginning of this kind of little ramble um, much better than AFR because AFR requires a number of frames in a queue so what typically happens is the action that you're seeing on screen can actually be several frames different to what you're actually reacting to um, and that that's not ideal to be totally honest in other words things could get a little bit out of sync and it's not the best way to play games and that's why certain games and certain engines are more likely to suffer from this than others um, and it's a problem that a lot of games designers have been trying to get around. So I did mention one of the lead-ins and obviously the title of the video the DX12 supports both AMD and Nvidia GPUs on the same PC. So what exactly does this mean? <clears throat> well 
as you probably are aware, if you want to run SLI, just for example, you need two of the same cards. So let's assume you're running 780. So let's say you're running a GTX 780. You'll need another GTX 780. It doesn't necessarily <coughs> have to be exactly the same card. So occasionally you can get away with like EVGA and whatever else in the same system. But typically the clock speeds will operate at the speed of the slowest card and so on. However, DirectX 12 is different and theoretically, and the source that are speaking to Tom's hardware does somewhat corroborate this, DX12 will be able to run both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in the same system. So to give you an idea, you would be able to run, say, FreeSync and True Audio from AMD, while at the same time taking advantage of hardware physics from NVIDIA. Isn't that awesome? I am really happy about this because... There are pretty awesome technologies on both GPUs, and that's the problem. It's like, you've got to make a decision. For example, sometimes AMD cards are better at compute. In video cards, you have hardware physics. Sometimes you might want GeForce Experience from NVIDIA. Other times you might say, hey, you know, I want true audio from AMD, and so on and so forth. And of course, now FreeSync's coming out, which is cheaper monitors as well, compared to G-Sync. It's very difficult to make a decision. Um, based on their technology alone, and I've argued this for some time, this is an excellent, an excellent option for those who are either going to buy two mid-range GPUs and put them in crossfire or SLI or whatever the hell you want to call it, and for even high-end, bleeding-edge users who want the best of everything. And don't forget, because it's going to be much more efficient, because it's going to split the screen into portions, and because, as you know, um, the GPU... Um, I'm sorry, the CPU can maximize, um, sorry, the rendering workload can maximize over multiple CPU cores. Even an Intel 5960X with all of the threads, each and every single one of the blighters, and it was maxed. That's insanity. It has eight CPU cores, and each of those are capable of hyper-threading, so that's 16 threads available for games, and... The workload on that CPU is almost 100%, so that kind of gives you an idea of what we're dealing with here in terms of performance, which is fantastic, at least in my opinion. Another exciting possibility is for low-power devices, laptops, for example, or other systems which are running APUs, because it would mean that you're going to be able to better divvy up resources, you're going to be able to actually run a really high-end card with a device that's capable or connect or able to connect to a DX, able to connect to an external graphics card and runs DX12. So in other words, you're going to have this, um, this situation where you can have like a little dock maybe for a laptop, you just plug that sucker in and you're going to have a very powerful uh, gaming laptop very easily because of DX12. It's awesome. So, is there any bad things here? Are there any negatives? Well, there are. The negative, however, is that developers are going to have to code most likely for lower levels. And it's theoretically possible that a developer could cause more bugs or more crashes for those who are particularly unfamiliar with either PC coding or those who aren't too versed in DX12. Microsoft are touting that DX12 is going to be a friendlier API than other low levels, but even so. The other possibly good piece of news is that SFR, as we just discussed, has an automatic mode, which means that developers won't really have to, if, they don't, if they're not super duper like confident, or they don't have the time to, you know, really put into optimization or whatever, they could just use the automatic mode and say, hey, hopefully this will be fine. And at the very least, it most likely won't crash. So, to round this off, what are my thoughts and opinions? Well, assuming it's true, and that's, of course, the key. Is it true? It looks like it's true, from what I can tell. Um, Tom's, hardware, Tom's hardware does seem rather confident. So, Let's assume, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that it's true. Okay, so if it's true, it's going to mean a rather massive shake-up in the GPU market, at least in my opinion. And moreover, it's going to mean that we as customers get a lot of extra options. 
And on top of that, it's going to mean that we ha as customers have ridiculous amounts of performance at our fingertips. We really will. I mean, PC performance is just going to go, it's just going to go through the roof, um, which is a good thing when you consider the technologies that are coming out for PC. 4K is becoming more prolific. You've got ultra-wide monitors which run at, say, 2560 by 1080. You've got um, 4K as well as 1440p. Um, downscaling, of course, is becoming more common with many visual um, enthusiasts wanting to downscale their games as well as maybe run MSAA. And perhaps the more demanding out of all of these is virtual reality technology. And as you know, VR because of the multi-screens in there and each one has to render a slightly different part of the image, it's going to be quite visually demanding to get the frame rates up because 30 frames a second, no, not even slightly. 60 FPS, maybe, but really, even John Carmack has said, heh, it needs to be like over 100 frames a second, ideally, to get the best immersive experience with um, virtual reality. It really needs that really high frame rate with very high resolution. And at the end of the day, this is how we're going to get it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions. If you want more information, it is in the article. But for now, take care and uh, have a great day.